what's going on YouTube today we're going to talk about obfuscation techniques and principles now the room that is connected to this principle is this one so the room name is obfusc obfuscation principles and this room is a precursor to another room which is the signature evasion so if I go to learn more here I'm gonna click on search hide newest so we have signature evasion here and we have obfuscation principles if you want to learn how to evade antivirus detection you've got to do these or both of these rooms so how to start you start first with obfuscation principles and then when you finish this one you go to signature evasion all right so let's start with obfuscation principles today we will cover the first four tasks and there is one practical scenario that is covered in task four before task four we will explain the principles all right so let's first define obfuscation the first thing that we will talk about today guys is the definition of obfuscation if you want to read extensively about obfuscation i recommend you guys to read this paper layered obfuscation a taxonomy of software obfuscation techniques for layered security it uh, actually goes through the obfuscation techniques definition principles and it explains the layered taxonomy or the layered obfuscation methodology i'm going to put the link of this in the video description all right so let's go back now so what is obfuscation let's define obfuscation here so obfuscation is a way guys to change to make changes on the code without of affecting its functionality so what do i mean by that so we have an original code here let's say the code in c right so if you want to obfuscate this code what you're going to do you're going to make a new version so say this is version one all right and we're going to transform this code into it's going to be it will stay the same in the same programming language which is c but there will be version 2 so what's the difference between the obfuscated version and the non-obfuscated version so basically the only difference is that the obfuscated version here is harder to understand this is it the objective is to make the code harder to understand sometimes we want to hide identifiers data identifiers right so we aim to make the code harder to understand okay and sometimes we aim to hide data we want to hide data okay so how do we make the code harder to understand and how to do hide data that's all explained in the layered taxonomy or the layered obfuscation okay so now let's talk about the goals of obfuscation why we use obfuscation in here so the goals are most of the time we have two goals the first goal is to protect something called the ip the intellectual property okay so basically as you know guys obfuscation is widely used in many software related fields so why do we use it uh, to protect intellectual why do we use it in software related fields actually to protect the IP intellectual property we aim to obfuscate the software or the original source code of the software to hide information uh, about the intellectual property and the trademarks okay so we can say we can safely say that obfuscation is originated to protect software and intellectual property from being stolen or reproduced we don't want the code to reproduce or, st or, or get stolen so basically uh, one example is that say you have a program that is paid right paid program for example we can talk about adobe here okay adobe dc so the developers of adobe dc they use obfuscation right to make the code harder to understand to hide data to encode data whatever just to protect the code from being stolen to protect the intellectual property because if the intellectual property and the main core components of the code are stolen what's going to happen other people can modify on the program on the source code and create something similar so obfuscation really plays an important role 
in protecting the intellectual property and the trademark of your software use obfuscation to protect your software basically you do an obfuscation or apply it on the original source code now what is another use of obfuscation now so this is to protect the IP the intellectual property next to to do something called the signature evasion sometimes we call this AV evasion we want to evade antivirus so which one is simpler is it simple is it simpler to apply obfuscation to protect the intellectual property or is it simpler to evade antivirus evasion to be honest guys um, evading antiviruses it's much much more simpler than hiding intellectual property the techniques used or the obfuscation techniques that are used to evade antivirus are only limited but when it comes to protecting the IP we have multitude of techniques or multitude of obfuscation techniques to implement to protect the software our focus in this series of obfuscation techniques and principles will be about signature evasion or evading antivirus okay let's get back now to this document scrolling all the way down let's take a look at this one as you can see this represents the taxonomy of software obfuscation techniques for layered security okay as you can see each sub layer is then is broken down into specific methods so we have the code element layer broken down into obfuscation methods for each layer we have obfuscation methods enter component layer application layer it resembles the oz layer in networking right but this time it up, it's applied or <coughs> it applies to the source code of the software all right so <coughs> in this series our aim will be focused towards the code element layer we will focus on obfuscation methods applied on the code element layer it can also be used to protect as as well the intellectual property of the software okay if we scroll down here we can see the obfuscation methods applied to the code element layer as you can see for each obfuscation obfuscation method we have its related techniques obfuscating layout controls data methods and classes okay now when it comes to signature evasion or antivirus evasion we will be working on obfuscating data okay so obfuscating data if we scroll down let's see here um we don't have it okay so for screen data, we have a couple of techniques here. This is one. This one is array transformation, data encoding, proceduration, data splitting, and merging. So let's look for. Let's scroll down. We we'll look for the first one: array transformation. Array. Uh, we aren't able to find anything here search more all right so the first method when it comes to obfuscating data in the code is the array transformation basically through all of the techniques here that go under obfuscating data what do we do actually we either split merge um, concatenate convert static data into with procedure calls uh, sometimes we combine va variables into one variable we do some changes on the code that will not affect its functionality but it just affects how it looks how the code looks for example in data encoding as a technique for of obfuscation what do we do we encode data with mathematical functions or ciphers base 64 encoding as an example data splitting and merging in here this one what do we do here guys basically we distribute information of one variable into several new variables just like adding uh, changing the name of the variables and adding variables to a new one this is how it works with uh, say data procedurization what do we do actually we substitute static data with procedure calls so we up and here array transformation we split or merge the array or the objects so we do, we apply you know uh, these techniques to a code in a way that won't affect how it works all right so we need now to take an example of how to apply this 
or how to go through this uh, method of fascinating data and its related techniques. One of the methods is object concatenation. If you go down to the board here, so we have the method here, it is concatenation. So concatenation goes under goes under data obfuscation. If you go back to the paper here, it goes under obfuscating data. Okay. Now what do we do in concatenation here, guys? For example, say we have um, a variable. Let's change the color. Yeah, a variable uh, such as a, and a equal say thm. We have another variable called b. B equal say HTB hack the box stands for hack the box so if we want to concatenate these two strings what do we do here we create a new variable called C and we say C equal a plus B okay now what's gonna happen here what's the value of C the value of C will be C equal THM HTB that's the value of C. That's simply the concept of concatenation. Okay. Now in Python, let's create a new page. So concatenation. So in Python, to use concatenation, you have to use the plus operator. Let's use another color for this. Plus operator. Okay. Now for say PowerShell. We use another operator. We can actually use the plus. Okay. We can use the dollar sign to concatenate. And in C sharp, we can also use the plus operator. Okay. We can also use string concat. String dot concat. And between parentheses, we put here the string. Or we have also C. In C, it's only one method actually to use strcat. So for each programming language, as you can see, we have operators to use concatenation. Okay. Now we're going to take an example here. Okay, a code in PowerShell. We need to obfuscate this code. So what we're going to do here, guys, I'm going to copy the code from TryHackMe and go to the machine itself. So this is the machine. Okay. Right. So let's open PowerShell Editor. So this is the code. Okay. Now, if you execute this code piece by piece here, let's take the first one. As you can see, it's composed of three CMD lets: get type, get field, and set value. Now, our job here. This is a simple line of code, by the way. Okay. We we're going to apply concatenation on this line of code to to obfuscate it and make it harder for Windows Defender to detect. So let's to do that. We're going to need to understand where the problem is coming from. We're going to need to find out where uh, where is the piece of code that is triggering the uh, antivirus signature. So let's take the first one, the first component or the first CMD. Let copy that and execute. As you can see, the script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus. So here we have a problem in this. So system.management automation, it doesn't trigger the antiviral detection. Why? Let's see that. So if we remove and keep system only, as you can see, it got executed. If we remove now everything until system.management, no problem. If we go back and remove AMSI util, UTILS, no problem. So then the problem is coming from this. This is what is triggering 
the antivirus signature, Windows Defender in our case. So how to obfuscate this? We're going to apply concatenation, right? We're going to implement data obfuscation at the code element layer. Okay, guys. So how to do that? We're going to use the plus operator as it is allowed in PowerShell to concatenate. So let's use it here. Let's get the first line or the first CMD layer, paste it here. And now we're going to perform the concatenation. So after the dots here, we're going to use two single quotes and the plus concatenation operator. Okay. I think I need to use um, bigger. I need to, I need to, to use a, you know, notepad so that you can see everything more clear view zoom in let's zoom in one more time yeah okay so i added the concatenation operator here okay and then i will separate msi from utilities so what's going to happen here guys is that i will use single quotes here okay and then plus sign and another single code. This way I separated AMSI from utilities. So it stays the same, the string stays the same, but it will appear different to the antivirus signature. So if I take this now and try to execute in PowerShell, as you can see, I got no problem. There was no warning from an antivirus. So the first stage of this obfuscation worked. So we were able to um, get the first CM delete to, um, you know, to make it bypass the antivirus. So let's work on the second CM delete here. Get field and see where is the problem in here. Again, the script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus. Let's take a look at this. Get field, MSI, initialize failed, non-public, static. If we try to keep, yeah, to remove all of that. Yeah, indeed, it's coming from MSI, initialize failed. Let's see the other ones. If we remove the responsible or the culprits and we try to execute non-public static let's see if this will work so it's not recognized get field not recognized as the name of the same delete all right so what what do we do here let's go back and take this copy that this one is clean okay paste it here and then we're going to get the next one and try to execute them all together like that all right fine now let's remove this one the MSI initialize failed as we know it is triggering the signature Okay, so it worked. So the problem is coming from this. Again, we will apply concatenation on this one to bypass antivirus signatures. Let's go back to the notepad. So that's what we have until far. We have concatenated this one. Now let's apply concatenation on this one. So the first one, AMSI, we put single code and then plus sign. Again, one single code. And we finish it with another single code. Plus, sorry. Yeah. Another plus sign. Single code failed. So we have concatenated the first one. Okay. Let's try now. See how it will work. So this time it worked. We got no, um, you know, warning 
for uh, an antivirus. So basically, this one works. Now, let's go through the last CM delete. So this is the last CM delete. Set value null true. Okay, it seems fine, right? Let's try it. So dot here, and then we pick up the last CM delete from the PowerShell editor, which is here. All right, this is the final one. Let's try if it will trigger the signature. And it triggered the signature. The script contains malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus. So again, here we have a problem, but it is not clear where it is coming from. It's interesting, as you can see, that there doesn't seem to be any parameter values that would contribute to this alert. So which means that <clears throat> um, the Windows Defender is alerting on the presence of this CM delete and it has determined that it is malicious snippet so in order to solve this problem we have to get rid of the, this CM delete how do we do that? again we apply the data obfuscation as a method under the code element layer in the layer taxonomy obfuscation how to do that? let's do this so here we can assign a value, we can say assign to a new variable. Let's say the variable name is value, okay, can be equal to the CM delete. Okay, and then we're going to execute this. Let's copy that. And then instead of using set value, we're going to use the value here, okay, as an alternative. The variable oops wait um, let me copy that one more time So instead of set value, I'm going to use value, okay? Let's try it. And we've got no warnings, okay? Now, let's put that into a partial script file and upload it to the machine to be able to get the flag. So we copy that and we proceed with the attacker machine I have already did that, you can just use echo okay and add this to into a file, I call, the, the file name is script.psc1 okay so what you're going to do, you're going to open the browser in the attacker machine, upload the file, pro, browse, script, upload if you have done everything correctly, you will receive this flag and this will mark the finish or the end <coughs> sorry the end of this task so we're going to submit the flag here and this way we finish the first four tasks of obfuscation i hope you guys learned or have found this informational and helpful and i will see you in the next video